This is part of a series on Maximum Doom. Today we'll be looking at exclamation point CSR E2M2.wad. And I'm gonna stop saying exclamation point right now or I'll sound like a coked up chihuahua before I even finish the first fucking paragraph. This map is actually a Doom 2 conversion, more on that in a minute, of a Doom 1 level titled CSR E1M1, aka Oblivion Part 1. Although the file name for that is CSR E2M1.wad. Confused yet? The E2M1 moniker is correct. According to WAD author Clint Russell, it was supposed to be the first in an Episode 2 replacement that never materialized as far as I'm aware. Text file contains a bit of backstory. Apparently you pissed off somebody in hell. Yeah, who'd have thunk? As a result, you've been sent to Oblivion. It's a lot like hell except everybody's got the same voice actor. Russell also mentions new sounds and music which come in a separate file, not included with Maximum Doom, but you can find it with the original Doom 1 version on the id Games archive. Here's the deal. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I can't get the sounds and the music to work together at the same time. And I can't get either of them to work with the Doom 2 conversion, which turns out to be a blessing in disguise. So I'm just going to give you a taste of both right now. Here's the music. Yeah, it's the Terminator theme played on pots and pans. Lars would be proud. And here are some of the sounds. I don't know which one's more irritating, although I might have to give it to the Imp Fireball, dive bombing right into my fucking eardrums. Anyways, fuck that noise, onto the map. According to the text file, you start in Oblivion's long hallway, next to a very unsatisfied hot dog. To the map's credit, this is probably the worst part. The aforementioned wiener is actually a series of platforms that lower when an enemy crosses a line depth on top of the platforms. So you'll wind up with imps and gunners all over the damn place before you can reach this lift, which is supposed to start up some crushers, but they don't start if the platform under them is down. Also the trigger to activate the crushers, easy to skip over. And the lift only works from the top, so if you fuck it up, you gotta go all the way back around. My advice? Jam a horse cock up this thing, leave it till you get some better weapons. Combat in the rest of the map is much improved. Lots of big old fights, first of which is right here in this hub area. And now's as good a time as any to talk about Doom 2 conversions. See, if you look at a list of all the wads in Max Doom, you'll notice a lot more Doom 2 maps. This is because they like to take Doom 1 maps and convert them using software. Baron becomes a Hell Knight, Shotgun becomes a Super Shotgun, that sort of thing. This fucks with the intended balance, which is why I'm touching on both versions. The reason I bring it up now is that playing these Doom 2 conversion wads, it's kind of like living next to a sex offender. If you're paying attention, you'll start to notice a few quirks, like an increasingly large collection of children's bicycles, or in the case of Maximum Doom, the arch vial. And I mean the single arch vial. The software likes to take one random enemy, turn it into a linklet. Usually a converted map is easier, this is almost the only way it can get more difficult. The map's lone archvile just happens to be in the middle of all this mess. Luckily, you get a BFG secret, so he's easy to deal with. In fact, all nine secrets are obvious as hell, and one will usually connect to another. Brief aside, in this secret you gotta press a switch and wait several years for the stairs to raise. Now the custom rising platform sound effect is a lot less grating than Doom's default ear rape, so I won't hold that against him. Point is, this leads to a spiral staircase that Mr. Russell was quite fond of. He includes a note at the end of the text file, quote, To see the spiral staircase, you must find your way into the secret areas. The staircase has full light texturing, meaning the closer you get to a light source, the brighter it gets in the stairway. An excellent optical illusion. That just means he made it darker in the middle, so I don't know what the fuck he's on about, but hey, these were the early days. The best part about this area is that it's a chain of five secrets that eventually leads to a ridiculous infighting party with lots of ammo. Best fight in the map in my opinion, which in turn lets you come at the yellow key room from a much more advantageous position. Now the yellow key itself is kind of interesting. You got a really tall lift. Ride it up and hit the central pillar to lower the key and a cyber demon. But he's the bad guy in a stealth game, so you can just Garrett the Taffin thing right out from under him, and he'll be none the wiser. I like that. 
Unfortunately, looking at those natty glutes drives me into an envious rage, so I gotta kill the bastard. You can lower the pillar all the way down if you press it when the lift's at the bottom, but you can't stop that lid from constantly blocking your shit. Yeah, this bar sucks ass, but that's my own fault for being a slave to the percentages. Doesn't help that this room makes my fucking eyes bleed, and uh, since I don't know a damn thing about making YouTube videos, the bitrate may very well be deader than Elvis right now. The visuals are the second worst part of the map, but this is about as bad as it gets. Not a fan of these spikes, though. On the auto map, the hub room looks like a drop of liquid splattered on the floor. Guess that horse cock pulled out just in the nick of time. The more pressing issue is health. You'll have soul spheres and health packs coming out your damn ears. And this room is an orchard of mega armors. Far as the eye can see. The Doom 2 level also gives you a mega sphere. Yeah, that's another quirk of the conversion software. Take a bad guy, turn him into one of the most useful items in the game. What could go wrong? I would say it fucked with the intended difficulty, but this map was already balanced about as well as Boogie on a Seesaw. I doubt yet another Tasty Ball is going to make much of a difference. All in all, I do prefer the sequel conversion, even if it is easier. What can I say, I'm a sucker for these two barrels of fun. They're both decent maps though, I especially like the secret areas, which don't just give you optional weapons and fights, but also ways of getting around the map. And while I didn't care for the sounds or the music, he did go out of his way to steal them, so F for effort, I guess. I think I'll give this one 6 excellent optical illusions out of 10. Recommend it if you're in the mood for a decent 94 wad. Later.